Okay. Yeah. So five years ago, we were homeless. We'd sold our house. We didn't have another one to go to, and we were living in a B and B. And tomorrow is the fifth anniversary of the day that we picked up the keys to our first narrowboat, Constanza. Five years. I know. Can't believe it. Absolutely unbelievable. We've done so many things, seen so many places and people, made new friends, and uh, made mistakes. Made loads of mistakes, <laughs> but uh, it's it's generally all been good fun. We've learned so much and had so many experiences and I think we've changed as people, haven't we, in those five years because of what we've been doing. Definitely slowed down, haven't we? And also yeah. our boat life has slowed down. In the two years we've been on Laura Maisie, we've slowed down more than we did for the first three years on Constanza. <laughs> uh, such a different attitude to, to life now. I keep, as you probably know, I keep a daily journal or a cruise journal, so not daily. But when you look, it was a daily journal in those days because we cruised every day. Um, did so many miles. And it's definitely, we can go a week now, I think we really ought to move. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all been interesting. Uh, would you want to live on an Arab boat? <laughs> Find out what we think. Yeah, five years in, this is what we think. Stay tuned. So as I said, we've been to so many fantastic places. But five places that stick in our minds. They're places that we wouldn't have probably been to without a boat, unless we were doing this life. And I think the one at the top of my list is going down to Bath and turning around in the basin oh, on the boat. Stunning. Um, we couldn't go any further because we were running out of time to get back to London. Um, but on the way back, we stopped and walked up Salisbury Hill, yeah. just because we knew the song so well. <laughs> I don't suppose we would ever have gone to Salisbury Hill, would we? No, it was the windiest day ever as well, wasn't it? But the view from <laughs> up there over Bath was amazing. It was. It was a stunning trip, wasn't it? It was. Froggle Tunnel. That um. was a laugh. <laughs> Handing the boat through the tunnel. It's uh, yeah. the lowest amazing. tunnel, I think, yeah. on the waterways, isn't it? On the Calden um, Canal, yeah. And that's one trip that we definitely can't repeat because uh, Laura Maisie is too big. She to wouldn't go fit through. Under there, no. um, so that was a scary time as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And yeah. talking about scary, it was going across and uh, Ponte Casilti. We're experts at saying that now. <laughs> Ponte Casilti. Ponte Casilti Aqueduct. Um, and the Langothlin Canal. What an experience! Yeah, amazing. I did it when I was ten or eleven, but uh, to do it again. Uh, it's just immense, isn't it? There's just hardly any words for it. It is just an amazing, iconic structure of the waterways. And we didn't have the best weather. It was a bit of a grey day. So that is one that possibly we will go back and do again. Yeah. Um, who knows? Um, and different weather again. When it was really, really hot. I think our first summer on board, it was roasting. Um, and we were going to the Upper Thames traveling as far as you can towards the source of the Thames. Yeah, it's a ledge load. Um, and it was so hot, we just jumped him off the back of the boat, yeah, didn't did. we? Yeah, swimming in the river, um, it was amazing. It was just lovely. And your daughter, Claire, came to see us. She went swimming as well. Yeah. And in fact, it was so hot, and I can remember now, up until then, we didn't have any proper flooring and wall panels on <laughs> our first boat. And on the hottest week, we stopped along there and put the floor and to improve on the boat, oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, oh. and finally, going across the Mersey to Liverpool with foxes <laughs> afloat, Sean and Colin. Absolutely amazing journey. We'd only just got to Laura Maisie as well by yeah. then, hadn't we? And you had her for about a month or so. Sparkling new boat that we were terrified <laughs> of scratching across the Mersey. And Liverpool itself was amazing, yeah. especially for you with all the Beatles stuff, yeah, wasn't it? Uh, incredible. And it's such a fantastic city nowadays. You know, it used to be dirty and grimy, but now they've uh, gentrified it, if you like, and it is amazing. It's, but, a, it's well to, worth a visit. To be there with Sean and Colin, obviously, topped it, and that's an experience. Yeah, obviously, we can't company. repeat now. Um, I don't think I want to go back there without them. <laughs> um, it was just lovely. So it's just a difference, isn't it? One minute you're up on walking on a hill in the middle of nowhere, and the next minute you're in a city, and it all makes up to these memories of it things does. we wouldn't have it done. Absolutely does. So that's five places that stick in our memory for all the good reasons. There are many, many, many 
places that we would never go back to again for all the wrong reasons, but uh, we're not going to bother you with those and uh, we'll move on. Yeah. One aspect of this lifestyle that we love is it's a healthy lifestyle if you want it to be. Walking, we love walking as you know, and uh, we've done, we must have done thousands of miles in the five years. But it's just the, the case that you can just walk off the boat and you're somewhere you can just be to walk rather than having to drive somewhere to, to walk. Especially here, but to be honest, anywhere, you know, even places that you tend to think are quite, you know, boring or built up. You get off the canal and walk for five minutes. You can be in gorgeous places. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the best decision we ever made was to get rid of the car, wasn't it? So that we walk. Yeah, it was such a bind, wasn't it? Having the car, having to cycle back or bus back to go and pick the car up or walk back to pick the car up and then take it to where the boat is. So that was, what did we do? I had, a, had the van with us about a year, didn't we, before we got rid of that, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was the best decision we made. And uh, it freed us up to do all this walking. But we're doing so much now up here and uh, you know it's only going to get more and more isn't it the walks are becoming such a big part of our lives now aren't they yeah and uh, even with aching limbs and bones and I'm as Fran says don't let the old man in no. so just keep on going <laughs> <laughs> I think this goes without saying that uh, if you're both going to live on a narrow boat you've both got to really love each other at least if you're both on the same boat. <laughs> I say that because there are some people we know or we've met that have their own boats yeah, that they travel do, actually, together. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's quite a sensible idea actually, at <laughs> oh. times. <laughs> no, but um, you're living in a confined space and especially in the winter when it's dark and long dark days, you've uh, really got to get on. I know when the other one wants a bit of quiet or a little bit of space yeah, yeah. and just you know just keep out the way for a little bit. Another, um, another way to keep yourself sane while you're uh, living on a narrow boat is to have plenty of hobbies, plenty of things to do other than canals and narrow boating. That is true because I couldn't think of anything worse than just sitting there watching a screen all the time, especially on a long no. winter day. So, so we've both got our yeah. hobbies, yeah. weaving, art, we like to play cards, we like to play board games and you know we go walking individually of each other as well at times and uh, that helps keep you sane so yes it can be difficult at times but, but we haven't had any problems have we no. we've been fine with it yeah. we're still together we're still here hanging on sometimes the canal towpath can be just a quagmire of mud and especially if you've got dogs it can uh, lead to a bit of a stressful existence at times i think it's one of the biggest questions or the most asked questions that Other we have what is toilet what, do you, do you have? <laughs> what do you do with the muddy dogs yeah um you do have to have a little bit of a system and you work out whatever works for you but yeah it's the worst thing isn't it in the winter i think yeah especially when you've just mopped the floor and uh, the dogs come in with <laughs> you think you've wiped their feet properly but uh, no it's uh, mud can be difficult i think one of your big hates about narrowboat life is the darkness in winter isn't it oh those two months well three i suppose november december january uh, can really affect your mood the dark long days stuck in a tube <laughs> a and steel it's, tube. it's so difficult to get the lighting right yeah. on a boat i know some people do have oil lamps we're really not comfortable with having that on a boat no. Um, but whatever we seem to do with lighting, we've made the boat cosy, definitely, but it just never seems to be quite right. Yeah, um, it'd be nice to be able to put uh, 24 volt lamps on, um, but you've got so much low battery power in the winter. You've not got much sun hitting the solar panels, so you really have to be careful about uh, power and its usage. And I think it's like weather's okay. You can cope. We can cope with the cold. We can cope with the rain. Um, and frozen in, all of those things are fine. It is just darkness, isn't it? Yes. Beware of darkness. <laughs> another song. Another <laughs> earworm. A great song by George Harrison. <laughs> and shopping. Shopping yes. for groceries. Yes. That is a real bugbear. Because uh, when you're out in remote villages like we are now you've got a local co-op to provide you with your groceries and you can't always get what you want and what you do want is a bit more expensive or a lot more expensive than in the town supermarkets you can get um supermarket deliveries if you want but we're not a keen 
we're not keen of that really um i like to see what i'm buying and also we don't really like supermarkets we like fresh no, yeah vegetables and fresh stuff um and sometimes you just can't get into a town or there's not a green grocer more and more these days there's not green grocers and you know we forage as much as we can when the citizens are here so we can eat well or eat as we want to but yeah. that's something is a struggle to eat the food that we really want to eat is not always possible is it no it's not but you you do a good job don't you of making the pound stretch as well in supermarkets and uh, oh definitely and then they and, and shopping in the markets in towns when yeah. we go there yeah and so what we've got tonight we've got vegetable moussaka tonight lovely rich's latest favorite yeah <laughs> might be coming to a video near you soon <laughs> Another thing to be wary of is um, danger. Canals are dangerous places to be, yes, as we've yeah. both found out to our cost in the yeah. last year. Uh, we've both fallen in proper, both injured ourselves in the process. Fortunately, not seriously, but uh, had we have banged our head on the way down, it could have been a different story altogether. And not forgetting, within our first few weeks on board, both the dogs were in a filling lock. Yeah. Um, and we were very, very lucky. It was our mistake that ha made that happen, but we were new boaters and we didn't know all the dangers. No. And wait for that car to go. I think sometimes um, you can get a little bit complacent. You go a, a year leaping across locks and up and down lock steps um, with no problems and you get a little bit lazy. When you, you think do. when I fell in, I didn't do anything wrong. I just stepped on the boat and obviously wasn't concentrating properly and you too. So, Absolutely. And especially this time of year when it's cold and icy and wet, all the locks are slippery. Yeah. So you really got yeah. to have your wits about you because uh, your day, your life can be ruined by one stupid second. Yeah, definitely. And if there's, if there's, we're not here to give advice, but if there's any advice I'd give to people or a couple going off on a boat, please, please, both of you learn to drive the boat. Yeah. Because you just never know what's going to happen. And one of you is going to need to take over. And I just, I can't imagine what it would be like if both of us couldn't drive. So that's what I think. <laughs> you might think differently. <laughs> one of the great things about <laughs> canal boat life as well is the amount of pubs you can go into. Ah. <laughs> And although you don't drink anymore particularly, do you? Not very much at all, no. <laughs> I still like to go in a pub though. It's still a nice thing. Sometimes I just have a soft drink. Often I have a soft drink or, or a, a beer. Yeah. But it's just a nice, sociable thing to do, isn't it? It is. And especially as pubs are disappearing at an alarming rate in this country, it's nice to uh, support those that yeah. are open and welcoming. You have to do your bit, don't you, yeah. to keep them going. Yeah. Talking of which, <laughs> yeah. there's one just around the corner, I think, oh, isn't there? Thank you. So, is there anything we'd do differently? I don't think so. I think we're going right back to the very beginning. I might have 
chosen a, a newer boat rather than something that needed a lot of work doing to it because um, we've rapidly discovered we don't like DIY <laughs> never like DIY anyway so what the hell were we thinking about we thought it would be different when it's a boat didn't we I yeah. think but uh, it, it I guess in retrospect you're right we would have maybe got a better boat than Constanza and not had to buy a new boat we might have even kept that boat and stayed mm. on it but we've learned that lesson we've learned that we really really don't like DIY and um, if from that respect, this per boat is perfect for us, isn't it? But we did love Constanza. She's a cracking little boat for us to uh, start our adventures on. Yeah. And I'm being distracted at the moment because there's somebody out the window there <laughs> staring inside the boat. I'm looking through the window. <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> so now, that from that point of view, we loved Constanza and we love this boat just as much, even more, perhaps. We did talk about the house didn't we and that maybe um we, when we sold our original house we bought the little cottage to let as a holiday let thinking mm. that eventually that would be somewhere that we might want to go back to um that in retrospect was not a good idea because it still meant that we were tied to finding cleaners and and looking after the place and we didn't have that sense of complete freedom that you have now no. Um, and I guess maybe we should have just bought a little flat or something that we could have let out permanently. But even that means you've got ties. And I can remember the feeling of freedom that we had when we sold the house completely and all we had was the boat. It was just, just a marvellous feeling of freedom, wasn't it? It was. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, But that's a personal thing. That's our, that's our decisions, you mm. know. So no, not, nothing differently really. We've we've been happy with the way we've done things, haven't we? And uh, the only other thing the I experience. think we said is we might have gone slower for the first couple of years because we did yeah. <laughs> um, all the the Kennet and Avon and the Thames and even around London. We whizzed through mm, we all that did. because we were so we keen to see what was around the corner yeah, we did. and so excited to see what was next. We just wanted to see the canals, <laughs> to be honest, didn't we? We just loved being on the canals. Like children know. at a sweet shop. Yeah, but now we explore all around a lot more than we ever used to. So uh, so we do feel that those little early parts of the canals we you know, perhaps should go back to yeah, and do at the yeah. pace that we do now. Um, who knows? Yeah. Apart from that, I don't think we would do anything differently Absolutely or change no. what we've done. No. Uh, what about uh, things we couldn't do without? You. <laughs> it goes without saying, Fran. Um, okay. It's. I mean, I guess we could do. I could do without it, but things that have made a big difference and made life easy. After five years on a boat, you get to know what things make life. A little bit easier mm -hmm. and one of them has been and this isn't a plug it's the thermal cooker we've got um, and ours is a Mr D's thermal cooker but there's lots of brands out there um, we just chose that one and it's brilliant in the summer especially now all the um, gas and electricity is like I'm well, not electricity but all the gas is so expensive and in the summer if you want to cook curries and chilies and stuff it's the perfect thing for a boat we use it, it all the time in the summer yeah, and bake a, bread in it it is amazing isn't it just to leave your leave it cooking all day while you're doing your life around yeah and if you're off boating if you've got a long day boating cook your dinner and it's done by the time you stop so that's one thing i do recommend it's a bit of an investment for a new boater and the oven in the stove that's been a yeah. boon hasn't it that's been fantastic yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't change that um the fire has been brilliant isn't it and uh, it's not so easy to cook stuff on top of the stove because you've got the oven but we're baking bread and cakes and casseroles and everything in mm. that little oven that was a real good choice it's been superb yeah I wouldn't do without my hi-fi. I love. I don't play it enough, to be honest. And I've got my turntable. It's not attached at the moment to the hi-fi. I've been having a few problems with We've got earthing. a buzzing. We've got a buzzing sound. So any uh, hi-fi enthusiasts out there, the GND cable is connected to the back of the uh, amplifier. But I think it might be that we're living on a boat and it's not earthed, earthed properly. I don't know. So uh, it's, we get a it's hum watered. coming through. It's not yeah, earthed. It's watered, yeah. But I, I wouldn't know. do without it because I'm still playing CDs, which is a, a great way of listening to music still because it's a far better sound and 
it's a physical thing that you've got in your hand and it's great. And of course they're tiny, so it's just brilliant for bursting, isn't it? And you can have loads it? of them on the back and you can get them for next to nothing now at charity shops. My latest thing on, my last thing, is my slippers. You cannot be without slippers on a narrowboat, especially in the winter. In the, winter. Yeah, yeah. It is, the floor is so cold. Um, I guess even if you've got carpet, we've got rugs down that we can lift and wash, but I wouldn't be without my slippers. I've never worn slippers in my life <laughs> until we moved on board a boat. <laughs> you do need them in the winter because the floor is underwater, not literally, but below the waterline. And uh, it helps. Yeah, we were good. laughing recently about our parents, memories of our parents. Any time that they went anywhere or came to see you, the first thing they did was unzip their bag and took their slippers out. And it's a bit like that with boaters now. You take your slippers and with We went us. to visit family, didn't we? And I actually said to you, should we take our slippers? And then we went, no. Old people. <laughs> it just needs a pipe and a cardigan. But another five <laughs> years and that'll be it. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll admit that I'm old. <laughs> Don't let the old man in. So we hope you've enjoyed this five year trip down memory lane for us. And the last question we ask ourselves is, would we do it again? Uh, of course we would. Yes, definitely. No regrets, definitely. absolutely no you know, regrets. Who knows what the future holds? You know, everybody knows that we're missing our garden, looking for a bit of land, mm. we, we don't know. But um, certainly, I've, five years have been fab and if it goes on for another five years that's fab too you know i can't imagine any other way of traveling around the country and just soaking it in at, at the snail's pace you know yeah. if you've got, we often we often talk about having a camper van just to complement this way of life but i can't imagine i mean i hate driving anyway but i can't imagine any other way of seeing the world slowly and the things we've seen it's just been amazing. It's just been absolutely and incredible. And the slower you go, the more you see. And that really is true. You know, you sit somewhere. We've found lately that we're sitting in the same place for weeks. Mm. And we're really getting to know even individual trees in an area. You look out at the view and you can see things changing. Um, you don't do that if you're rushing around, do you? You don't. You don't so, indeed. Yes, we're happy where we are. And here's to the we? next five years. Yeah. Who knows? Where we'll be in five years' time, what we'll be doing, uh, we don't plan. That's another thing, isn't it? We don't plan, we don't make plans, because we know they always change. It's, yeah. yeah, especially on boat, in a boat, you just, you've got to give, you've got to go with the flow. So, see you on the next one. Thanks, Thanks. very much for watching, yeah. and uh, catch you next time. Thank you. Bye.